The Glass Bamboo Frog Consort is a piece I composed in 2001 uh, for cello quartet. It was originally for cello trio, composed in 1994, and the original sketches come from earlier explorations with the cello. And this piece exploits a very interesting resource we have with the detuning of the two lower strings of the cello. This detuning is called the Kodari Scordatura because uh, Zoltan Kodari did this, used this tuning, detuning, for his uh, solo cello sonata. Very famous piece, of course. So I, I was practicing the Kodari sonata and just by improvising, I discovered that the harmonics that this detuning produced were extremely interesting because there's a very striking contrast between the natural harmonics of the lower string, the C, which is now a B natural. So the natural harmonics of the B natural string are obviously, uh, uh, you have an F sharp and you have a D sharp, which is the third uh, of, the, of the B natural. So the contrast between that D sharp and the open string D harmonics. So the D sharp harmonic of the lower string and the open string, the D harmonics, are clashing constantly. Same with the, with the D tuned G string, which is an F sharp now. So the third is an A sharp. And that natural A sharp harmonic in the G string, which is now an F sharp, contrasts or, or clashes against the open A string. So we have a very interesting, within the, the, within the har natural harmonics, a very interesting relationship between the lower strings and the high strings. This contrast creates friction, and this friction is used rhythmically in this piece. It has three sections. The first section is a, like a canon, a, a three-voice canon, with the fourth cello playing something like a chant over the canon. So the canon is really reminds me of the Gothic vocal music of the 15th century for the Gothic cathedrals. Uh, it's a slow moving canon, not too long, but very mystical and very, it's like a contemplation before the action. Then after a short transition, you have a very rhythmic section where all kinds of nocturnal sounds are evoked like crickets and frogs and rhythmic crickets and rhythmic frogs and usually these these insects and animals are rhythmic in their chanting and their and their singing so you you feel uh, in this piece which is all in harmonics except for the fourth cello uh, you feel something happening beyond the sound something happening in the space between the voices it's, a, it's more than a harmonic relation, it's something that has no location because harmonic sounds, or natural harmonic sounds and the artificial sounds as well, seem to come from nowhere um, as opposed to the, to the full sounds of a string. So the harmonic interactions between these voices in a very tight rhythmic counterpoint in natural harmonics create auras of pulsating uh, vibrations and, 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 and textures that are extremely interesting. And in those pulsating textures that uh, remind us of all sorts of things in nature, uh, you have many, many devices, glissandi from one harmonic to the next, uh, swift uh, uh, transitions, and also moments of static repetition with very subtle changes in a sort of a minim minimalist framework. Uh, but this is not the end of the piece. The piece ends in a binary uh, time signature and the fourth cello there recovers uh, real notes, not harmonics, and plays a very rough bass line to end the piece. So I think this is an interesting cello quartet for a group looking for new repertoire and it's something that will be 
uh, quite challenging but rewarding because the the effect on stage is extremely mysterious and very very difficult to understand. It's something that floats in the air. You don't know where it's coming from. So I like this piece a lot, and it's of my early explorations with the cello.